recording. All right. It's the Danny Cutler Show on KWSS 93.9 FM and streaming at kwss.org. And we are also via Zoom right now. That was for everybody who's tuning in on 93.9. And I have a whole bunch of guests with me on Zoom. It's kind of crowded, but I like it because, you know, I'm just, I got all these guys paying attention to me right now. So, <laughs> hey, <laughs> I have got Let Alone here and Tyler, Tar it's Tarquini. Yep, you got it. Uh, Tarquini, and I've got Cody Milford, who is the God Samaritan, all hanging out with me. Hello, everyone. Hello. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> it's so funny when you do this and everybody says hi at the same time, and it's like nobody can hear it anyway. <laughs> 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 well, thank you all for joining me. And the people who are listening, this is recorded on a Wednesday evening, even though you're hearing it now and it's Friday morning, but there's no concept of time during pandemic times, right? <laughs> No facts. Nope. I know, I know. So I want to start really quick and introduce everybody to Let Alone because this whole thing and the remix and the coffee, it's all about this band that we also premiered here on KWSS when the Safety Pin first came out. So yay, that's pretty awesome. Mm -hmm. um, so guys, or whoever's going to speak, which I bet, is it Marcus? Is it Marcus going to speak? <laughs> yeah. Really? That's, like that's your guess? Really? Is, is he your spokesman? <laughs> Absolutely. Um, it's gonna it's gonna be a mixed bag, but yeah, I, I think the base the base questions probably. Like, we'll, <laughs> well, let's start off just by how did Let Alone form? Uh, I think my most popular answer so far is uh, I kind of like tricked these dudes into doing this. Kinda, they they're each from um, other bands. Uh, Alan was from Terra Fractal, and then um, these two had a band called Whisper Engine. And uh, we, we did this Incubus cover the Crescent thing. And then when we were done with that, we were still kind of playing around. And I kind of just started like leaking in a few of my like things I was writing and to, to get them each to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, let's just jam on that for a second. I'm like, oh, really? To <laughs> totally. Yeah, we should we should definitely jam that. Um, and then it just kind of snowballed from there. Luckily, um, a lot of the the, the darker weirder things I bring to the table they, they all like and uh, that's how it kind of unfolded. Nice dark and weird I'm, I'm, yeah, dark and I'm weird. on board for that that's good that's good so how was it forming a band during the pandemic I mean you played your show and you started putting things together but you know I mean we're going on a year now of nothing. <laughs> Lucky is how it happened so Justin's dad married my sister. I'm his younger uncle. I'm his yunkle. <laughs> so he's he's in my my choir circle. You know, he's in my quarantine group. Um, and then Alan, um, basically the the way we run it down is we get a lot of bass stuff between us, and then we get the bass in on it. So we could kind of portion it in, keep them across on the other side of the room, you know, make sure we got some stuff locked down. Um, and then Jeremy, a lot of times we'd have three pieces locked in and we'd be like, show up with this. And he'd show up and he'd be like, you mean like this? And the first thing, <laughs> a lot of times, the first thing he just plays, we have to make him relearn later because we're so attached to it. Like it's, it's, it's been that um, natural for the, the dark and weird, I guess, as, as it was earlier. But yeah, that's kind of how it run, ran down. And it's kind of, I mean, now we are each other's quarantine circle. So it's even, honestly, it's it's been even easier to piece things together. We've been sitting on a record that's been done now since the beginning of quarantine when you and I first talked. And that part's frustrating, but getting to play like twice a week together because we're our own quarantine circle is everything. It's, it's yeah. everything. I bet it helps in a lot of ways, not just to keep you guys together and practicing, but I mean, music. Yeah. Together. keeps our sanity yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. so i want to go to um i want to talk about the remix before we get to the the coffee collab because i know that cody's got to go here but um uh, so what's happening friday or today if you're listening right now it's today <laughs> is there's this whole remix of the safety pin that is premiering and it is a collaboration with holy fawn and the god samaritan so how did all that come together let's get um, a little background from you marcus on how it came and then i'll ask cody about it sure sure so um ryan osterman um, he sees the singer songwriter for, for Holy Fawn. Um, he does his own um, remixes of 
tons of people's songs and they're they're amazing and they're dark and weird uh he's <laughs> he's he's our brand um so is so is cody which is why this kind of worked out this way um he put out that he was doing remixes and with him it's like you have to send him the track and if he doesn't vibe with it i guess is, is what i would say then he's not going to do it like whether or not you're paying him or he's just doing it as a collaboration um and we were fortunate enough to where we, we kind of do fit in his niche so him and i went back and forth on versions of it for um all of quarantine basically uh and then something something kind of happened where like cody released a, a hot fire track and and a lot of the things i heard on that elements were existing in what we were doing he's worked with ryan before uh that was a really easy decision i hit him with it and uh i think he said i fuck with that heavy was the answer <laughs> that um, yeah that tracks. Quote. <laughs> i had to bribe him i had to bribe him with the utmost expensive uh fancy capri suns and a bunch of other things to, to make him um come to my to my abode i guess what you would fake calling like a studio or whatnot mm -hmm. to get him to come um do what he does and and he he done did it uh, nice so so cody what what drew you in i mean you know they're talking about how they wanted you for it but what was your what got you involved personally um well what drew me into the house was indeed the trail of capri suns that I'm led sure. into the vocal booth um <laughs> but what le uh what uh led me to the song is it just has such a unique dark and eerie vibe to it like as soon as i heard those strings i was like yeah i'm gonna spit on this that's the, like it's a done deal uh it's such uh the the song the like the original song wonderful i loved it and then this just it it struck like a really really spooky chord with me that's just i've never heard anything quite like this and i, I really just wanted to get involved nice nice and yeah it seems to work what i love about this is that it just kind of happened it wasn't like who should we use for this what should we do it was like as it was coming together it feels like you just knew it was like oh cody mm -hmm. needs to work on this oh ryan is putting this together and and i love i mean if if ryan didn't vibe with it it doesn't happen i mean that's just how it should be i think for anybody mm -hmm. i mean you're not going to have good music if the person who's creating it and remixing it isn't into it, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it just seems like a given. So, Facts. but well, that's really awesome. That's really mm -hmm. awesome. Okay, Cody, you're excused. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> before, <laughs> get out. No, before I let you go, though, um, was it was it Albatross? Was that the one that that made you think that Cody be good for it, Marcus? Um. So let it burn actually oh, okay. it is much more of it. Albatross rules too. Um, but but let it burn has has the angst, has the the aggressiveness that when, when you hear this, you're gonna understand why this this had to happen. I mean, it might even be in the recording if you if you listen carefully. There's a point where you can hear me from the like control room just be like, yo! <laughs> uh, it, it, so he, I didn't even need him to send me the words, but he did. And those were on it. And then he came in and when he started, I just, you know, that like Jay-Z face where it's like, oh, oh, <laughs> God, oh, God, Samaritan, you know, making me blush. No, yeah. it's fantastic. I mean, I finally, I was very lucky because I think it was like January was the first and last time that I saw you, Corey, mm -hmm. perform. And I was blown away. I mean, I know I was probably the oldest person there, but I... <laughs> loved it and it was fantastic and you get the crowd i mean it was it was an amazing it was an amazing performance so i can't wait to have that start happening again seriously yeah i am so excited and like being able like hopefully one of these days we can play this song live that would be absolutely insane oh, um, yeah I, I i appreciate all the kind words guys you're making me blush <laughs> <laughs> well it's all it's all coming from love and it's all true so <laughs> so keep on blushing yeah we owe you like a million capri suns i don't know yeah. <laughs> i accept you accept yes mm -hmm. yes so well now i want to move on to the next portion it's so funny because there's so many facets to this remix there's just so many <laughs> elements to it and i love that and so there's a coffee element which is you know hosting a morning show i rely on it heavily <laughs> every day being on at 6 a.m. Oh, yeah. Um, we do have here uh, Tyler Tarquini, and he is with Obsidian Coffee. Um, hi, Tyler. Hi. 
Hi, thank you for being here. And uh, where are you at now? You're not in, you were here in Phoenix. And where are you I'm at in the, now? Yeah, I'm in the good old Midwest now in Danville, Illinois. That's kind of where I was born and raised, but I lived out in Tempe for about six years. How's the weather so. right now? <laughs> Oh God, it's awful. Uh, it was like negative five the other day. I, uh, I'm in my car hearts and I had to change my tire on the middle of this Georgetown road. Um, oh. It's definitely going back to like farm city, like, uh, but it's fun. You know, it's, you got a different pace of life and you really kind of just uh, appreciate what you had before, you know, but you have to have those, you know, low times to have those high times too. Right. So. As you look at the guys <laughs> over here and let alone, they're all outside. Yeah, they're outside. Yeah. Like yeah. 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 Style. <laughs> We're not going to mention it was almost 80 today. No. Oh, <laughs> man, I miss it so much. Yeah. We finally got a day of like 35 today. So I'm wow. wearing like, a, I'm wearing this flannel, but I, my girlfriend was wearing a t-shirt and <laughs> enjoying life, you know? Crazy. So. Oh my gosh. Well, tell us how did Obsidian Coffee begin? Well, uh, I moved to uh, Albuquerque in 2014 and hated it out there. So I moved to Tempe and uh, in about 2015 and um, started working at Cartel Coffee Lab. And that's where I know a lot of the people out in Tempe. That's where I met Marcus uh, back in the day. And I just want to start kind of my own thing, maybe with a little bit more of like my character and what I enjoy about coffee. And I also really enjoy the music scene. And so if you look at a lot of my Obsidian stuff, it's kind of like, it almost looks like a heavy metal band or like a hardcore band. So uh, a lot of the merch is just kind of focused on that. And, kind of, and they, I think that's where I kind of came into the spooky vibe. It's like, everything's very like heavy metal looking. So I really, I mean, yeah, I don't, I mean, the only people I see kind of doing that is Dark Lord or not Dark Lord. That's uh, the beer, the um, Dark Matter Coffee up mm-hmm. in Chicago. So I was really influenced by them too. So nice. and they do a lot of uh, music collaborations as well. So I think that's one of the first people I saw started seeing doing that so yeah so did Marcus reach out, reach out to you to collab on the coffee or was yeah, it yeah we always try to figure out something like music wise but I think this is the first like the perfect match where it it just made sense you know yeah we never got to date so we just kind of had to like do the best we could to- I was gonna say I was his bartender his barista I never got to be his lover though so that was just the one thing <laughs> yeah. that messed up fine I'll like, make your coffee I mean, I, I'd kiss him again I was just saying so no, um, but yeah, so it, it's, and it's even this, this moment right now, this community that like, man, you just don't really see it other places. I'm just, I'm so thankful that I got to be a part of Tempe and this, the, in, in the Arizona community. So thank you again, just for letting me be here in general. So, and being a part of this collaboration, it's been really cool. This is why you're the guy. That's why you're the guy. <laughs> Thank you. Definitely. That. Definitely. And the coffee is amazing. I mean, I thank had you. some this morning and, and thank you, Marcus, for dropping me off a, a bag. It's, it's good. It's good stuff. So what, what do you, Tyler, what do you, what's your thought process? Do you like listen to the music and then try and figure out the kind of blend you want to make? How does that work for you? There, I mean, I have done that for people. I do kind of specialty blends depending on what they're doing. I mean, this is also a very dark, um, kind of like we keep saying spooky vibes so I just need a more of a full body it's a Nicaraguan coffee um, I think it's just it's like dark chocolate caramel um, maybe some like orange peel like kind of notes in it but nothing too crazy more of a kind of a crowd pleaser too because I want everyone to enjoy this because sometimes you get into these too bright acidic coffees I don't want everyone to like kind of turn away from that so I think it's just a good no one's going to um, be upset with this coffee, you know? Right. Yeah. So. Well, I know you can go too dark. If you go look at that little bug, just like right there in the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. On the roof. We're being yeah, attacked. We're on, we're on the on, roof. Yeah, we're on the roof of where we like practice. Uh, yeah. Window oh, to nice. practice. Right Climbed out the window. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. <laughs> How funny. But what I was saying was, um, you know, it's like you can't go too dark because not everybody likes really dark coffee. And and like you right. said, you can't get too, you know. The, acidic, yeah. Yeah, yeah like, exactly. There's light, the word yeah. acidic. I was like acidy. <laughs> I always say bright, but they're like, it's not, it's not darker. Like, you know what I mean? It's, you're saying yeah. a, a light, <laughs> not a, not a flavor. Well, it's so. unique. It's unique. Like the remix and like everything that's happened. So, I mean, it fits perfectly. I mean, I've heard the remix. I know everybody involved and I've drank the coffee. So it, for me, it's just like this perfect blend, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, yeah. I think that's amazing. Um, where can people check out Obsidian Coffee? Yeah, I have it, uh, everything online still. It's www.obsidiancoffee.com. Um, I have two coffees up there right now, but um, 
I'm trying to get some, I have a Mexican Chiapas coming in and then um, I do a lot of collaborations around here. So um, we might get one more uh, coffee up there here soon, but right nice. now I have those two. So Nice. All right. And then cool merch too. If you guys need beanie, well, it's 80 degrees over there. Sorry. I don't need beanies <laughs> anymore, uh, but we got t-shirts and long sleeve t-shirts as well. So if you guys need some merch, that's up there Very too. Cool. I saw the beanie over on Instagram and it, you know, you would never know if you didn't know what it was, it, you would never think it was a coffee. <laughs> that's yeah. actually danny fun fact that's actually me in the beanie <laughs> yeah well like, see you guys like, didn't date so now you're just his model yeah i guess <laughs> and the way he's been my like bean juice dealer for a really long time like basically when we but, started this I idea, you've been your drug dealer yeah technically <laughs> caffeine yep. is a drug uh, it is my favorite drug. <laughs> um it goes beans tyler as far as drugs go for intake. So uh, initially I like sat him down on his couch and played this for him and he was like, okay. Yep. And I was like, dude, don't even, you don't even have to ask me questions about what I want. Like obviously full trust. So he just came out with it and it's it's a hit, I think. I think yeah, I really enjoyed it. That was a good time. That was crazy. I mean, that was one of our, probably our last times we got to hang out. No. And COVID <laughs> happened and- No. <laughs> We'll get back. We'll get back to it. And then we're all yeah. just going to have to take a trip to Illinois, I guess. Um, oh, if you you want to come see cornfields and graveyards, tell you what. <laughs> Summertime. Uh, That's kind of cool. <laughs> we can all go to go. dive bars, though, which is like the grimiest ones, like in Georgetown or like there's a booty, Illinois, just to let you all know. I so we all, oh we'll go to <laughs> we'll go to drink some bush light and booty. Ooh. See, <laughs> there we go. There, you see, we're already planning Let Alone's tour. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Danny yeah. and I met in dive bars, so it's just natural. That right. Way. It just, it's perfect. Perfect. So, <laughs> so let's go back a little bit and back to the song. Um, what safety pin, what is it about? Give me some background on the song. Ooh, uh, <laughs> what is it about? The, way, the way I described it to like Ryan and Cody when, when they asked to, and, and eventually like they read the lyrics on the show, but it's like, I got Those it. are buddy, man. He got kicked <laughs> out of the band. You're just hearing. Back we here. have to kick Jeremy out of the band now because he squashed our moth. Whatever. Moth got shit. kicked out of the Sorry, band. Sorry, distracted. This is, this is one of the most violent interviews I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> so hardcore. Guys, we're hardcore. so we're hardcore. Uh, it's it's like this this karma come round thing, right? Like you, you maybe back burner people um, or things that you don't think is worth it, right? And you never see like the consequence of it or like feel that. And then all of a sudden it happens to you, right? And like, this song was like, how do you write a song that says fair enough? You know, like that's what this whole feeling of the song is. It's like, fair enough. Like I got got, you know, that's that's what happens. Uh, you do it all the time and then it happens to you. And this was the perfect, just like close, close the, the book on that feeling by just putting it out there and, and being like, once you can name it, you can kind of just be, be, be done with it, I guess. I get it. Sometimes. Yeah. That it doesn't always work. It saves, saves my therapist a lot of time, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Yay, music and writing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. So what is coming up for the band? Uh, I mean, we're getting to a place now. And, you know, it's, it's not quite there yet. But yeah. I yeah. feel like, I, me personally, I feel like we have to get through the summer get those vaccinations and maybe by fall, who knows, you know, are you guys hopefully itching to, sure. yeah, I know sure. it's exactly like, it's hard. It's hard to be optimistic about that, but basically I, I'm glad you asked that. Cause we, we asked that, I think to, to ourselves, like, what can you do as a band right now? Like <laughs> what's going to matter. Right. Cause there's some people that are releasing records right now, and this is not a dig on them way to go please guys our song's dropping but sydney sprague's records that's coming out on friday is going to be my album mm -hmm. year. Yep. Cake, no about it um people dropping records right now that are doing it well just like double clap for you guys Jeez. yeah we need it. it's insane so we decided to go a different direction though which is we don't want to drop our album yet because we want to play it right so mm -hmm. instead we did the remix that was that was going to be our, our thing is hey let's do a remix let's let's get some cool things involved and let's do something for somebody with the remix and that's where the the, the collaboration with coffee came and 
donating everything we make from it to Rebel. Um, Tyler got the price really low down on the bag so that nobody would hurt from this. And we were able to now give every penny from every bag. We have only three left with like two days to go. Um, I guess three if you got tonight. Uh, probably going to be able to hand over like six or 700 bucks to the Rebel crew, which- The uh, Rebel Lounge. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's <laughs> so- Everyone knows that, right? We all yeah. know, yes. Everyone right. who's listening so, and watching knows. Yeah. They, know. they know, yeah. So we've all been there. That was it, right? That's a box you can check Love off of. What can you do as a band? And this is something you can do, right? We can mm-hmm. get money to people we actually like that, you know, I, I did a DJ thing there like last mm-hmm. week, I think it was, and talking to people about having to hold down other stuff while just wanting to keep working at rebel as much as they can or when it kicks back up is hard to hear so yeah. that box we got to check off the next thing we have coming up i kind of um hinted to you a little bit it's going to be really cool it's another box we're checking off of what can we do for another organization we'll kind of we'll kind of get you more more details as that comes but there'll be, there'll be a release in march too probably probably later in march. i know what that is <laughs> <laughs> So that'll be cool too. It's still not going to be a record, but it's it's something I care about a lot, and I think we cared about a lot to make it happen. So, Absolutely, you know, it'll I be love more all the like teasing. A, yeah, it'll be more of a live thing too. We taped and recorded it at the same time, so that it'll people can get a taste of what we we actually sound like live. Oh, nice! We get a taste. Good taste. <laughs> no, I yep. love it. It's, it's all fantastic, and I. <laughs> I love that you guys are being, I mean, the optimism, I can tell that you guys are very optimistic about everything that's coming up and, and, you know, personally, thank you guys for, for not jumping out there and trying to do anything right now. (laughs) I appreciate that. So, I mean, we got a hard stance on it. I mean, it's how we feel if, if you want me to be just full, full on about it is, People who had to gig to make a living, someone's going to get those gigs and we get that. But people putting on shows right now, I'm sorry, you're, you're garbage. That's how it's how it's felt right now. If, if someone is putting on a mass show and, and putting other people in harm, that's how we feel. So yeah. I feel um, it. I, I get it. I totally understand. Just not time yet, not really. So that's, and that's it's not, we, do. we don't have that much longer to wait. We really don't. I agree. That's why. That's why it's a big yeah. deal. <laughs> yeah. I mean, just, you know, if nothing else, just go get vaccinated. Just worry about that right now. And yeah, yep. I'm with you. I'm with you. So I'm, I'm just going to wait when I, when I post all this, just wait for all that hate email to come in. <laughs> yeah, <that's okay>. yeah. <laughs> they, can, they can aim it this way. I don't, I don't mind. Oh that. no, it's all good. I mean, I, I'm, I'm thankful that you're being so candid about it because I, I think a lot of people, because we are such a, I mean, it's a close knit community here in the Valley. And I think everybody's afraid to step on, you know, everyone else's toes a lot of the time, you know, because they yeah. don't want to, you know, rock the boat or whatever. But it's like, yeah. you know, I get all... when it's their living. Yeah, when well, it's their living, I understand, and I and I may yeah. even support in any way that I can, and I feel safe doing so. But for a band that doesn't do it as something that is going yeah. to keep their life afloat, we're not going to go. Yeah, yeah, it's there. There's really I can't see the the full purpose of it either. Other than I understand we're all feeling the fatigue right now, but there's other things you can do to connect, keep in touch with your community. So many things. Yeah. Yeah. Find a coffee. You know, find a someone who can make you a coffee and and help support the community in other ways. You know, there's so many things to do. Seriously. So. Yeah, but I get it. I get it. So, all right. Well, on that note, (laughs) 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 on that note, um, no, I appreciate uh, Tyler. Thank you so much. I know that it's a couple hours later right now, so you're probably winding down for the day. Maybe. (laughs) I don't know. I would be. (laughs) It's only just begun. Oh, (laughs) I see. Yeah. Um, but I appreciate all of you hanging out um, this evening. I almost said this morning. I mean, it is going to air in the morning, but <laughs> but uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out. And I'm going to play the remix now in the 939 local spotlight. And uh, woo, woo, woo. yeah, yeah. So um, keep me posted on all the other things happening. You too, Tyler. Anything going on with the coffee and you want to like give it some extra love? Please. Awesome. Thanks, Danny. Appreciate yeah, that a lot. Absolutely. So, well, it was great uh, meeting the rest of the band and everybody. And Marcus, I can't wait to run into all of you 
even if I'm in Illinois, I mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, y'all are always welcome. Just always know that. But I yeah, you I, guys very much. Yeah, yeah. so um, thank you all for, for being here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for having us so much.